On day 10 of the siege, the Japanese finally made their move to relieve the defenders. They would do so both by land and sea. Nabushima Naoshige and Kuroda Nagamasa left first, going the route on land that they had decided on in the joint meeting. Second to leave would be Kato Yoshiaki, Akoma Kazumasa, Nakagawa Hidenari, Wakazaka Yasuharu, Yamaguchi Muninaga, and Akita Hideo. Mori Hidemoto would be the last to depart on land with his men. By sea would be Chosokabe Morochika and Akita Hiroiji. But first, they would sail to Yampo to combine their fleet with Kato Kiyomasa's. All of Kiyomasa's remaining soldiers would use their comrade ships to ferry them to the battle ahead. Now, crazy enough, this wouldn't be all that was headed towards Dosan. Shimizu Toyohisa had already arrived at Eonyang the previous day and would be continuing onwards. Mori Takamasa and Kakawa Hiroi were also en route. But even that's not all. Toto Takatora had recently completed the Sunchan Fortress and sent his adopted son, Toto Takayoshi, and Toto Yoshikatsu, and Matsura Shigenobu, who had also helped in the construction of the fortress at Sunchan, was on the way. But even that wasn't all. Kurishima Hikezoyiman and what was left of Michifusa's fleet from the Bao of Mianyang was sailing towards that direction, and Khan Ueman Pache, son of Michinaga, was also bringing part of his far's fleet to help the defenders. As the relief force started to pour into Songsan, the small camp there was now alive with hundreds, if not thousands, of banners of different colors and sizes. Yang Hao's scouts reported this very thing to him, which greatly unnerved him. He then ordered a contingent of cavalrymen to reinforce the men at the northern bank of Jotun to set up a second line of defense, should it be needed. He also sent Mao Guoqi and his southern Ming troops to reinforce Wu Wei Zong's elite troops to guard the riverbanks around Dosan Fortress. This quick response would be a very different one to the careless response of Lu Zhizong who was supposed to be watching the river mouth several kilometers away from Tusan. For whatever reason, he didn't seem to notice the massive amount of Japanese ships gathering at Yampo. This, of course, would be a very costly mistake for the Ming. Later in the night, funny enough, Kato Kiyomasa, seemingly oblivious to the massive amount of support that he would soon get, sent another message to Song San for help. His plea, of course, would soon be answered. It's now day 11 of the siege, and it's also the day when the negotiations for surrender are supposed to take place. Yang Hao sent a messenger to the edge of the fortress before the sun had even risen to get Kato Kiyomasa to come out so that the negotiations could begin. It seems that, according to Chinese sources, that this was all a ploy to capture the commander and that they were never actually going to go forward with the peace talks. Not that it mattered, though, because Kato Kiyomasa wasn't going to show up. The negotiations for him was simply a tactic for time. As said previously, if his comrades couldn't come and save him and what was left of his men, he had decided to die fighting. Now, sometime around after this, the Japanese ships at Yampo started on their way towards Dusan. While this was happening, Joseon naval commander Yi Yong, who had been at Kyongju, decided to make his way there and was scouting at the river for more information. The sight that he saw alarmed him greatly. Japanese warships pouring into the Namgang River. He then sent a report to Yu Song Yong and moved his ships far away from that area. However, no report was sent to the Ming. By 4 p.m., the fleet at Ulsan was blockading both the Tewa River and Dungchan River. As this was happening, the last part of the Japanese relief force had now arrived at Ulsan. The first two groups then set up a new camp on a hill south of Jotun. This cut off Zhu Chengzun and Wu Weizong's detachment from the rest of the Ming army. They were also now being attacked in skirmishes from the Japanese. These groups were organized into parties of around 50 soldiers in each. Upon seeing that the Ming in the area couldn't move, Kuroda Nagamasa, Nabashima Naoshige, Hachisuka Iemasa, 
and both Mori Takamasa and Kikawa Hiroi marched their men towards Dasan. With the massive Japanese ships on the river providing support, they then decide to move their armies across the Tewa River. The Ming, however, wouldn't let them. Both Li Rumei and Zhi Sheng led a large contingent of cavalry along with Joseon troops to the bank to stop them. And after an incredibly brutal battle, the Japanese were forced into the southern bank of the Tewa. The battle was a mess about now. The Japanese ships filled the river. The entire south bank of the Tewa was alive with Japanese men and their banners were all over the place. At this time, Yang Hao could either retreat or take the time that his men at the river was providing him to attack one last time, break through Kato Kiyomasa's defenses, and capture the commander. Yang Hao wasn't interested in retreating though, so he gave orders for torches to be prepared for a night attack. He would, according to Chinese sources, reorganize the Ming forces into three defensive positions. Po Guai and Bai Sei would remain at Jotun, and two Joseon commanders and their men would be sent there as well so that they could keep the Japanese under watch. Li Rumei and Zhi Sheng and a couple of Joseon detachments would defend the riverbank against any Japanese landings. And the southern Ming troops under Wu Weizong and Ma Guoqi would be positioned at the junction of the river to guard both the southern bank and the Japanese ships at the Dongchon River. Wu Weizong's detachment and Zhu Chengzun's on the southern bank of the Jotun were basically abandoned. Lu Zhizong and his men were actually in a worse spot out of all of these, though. As they were stuck between the Japanese held naval base at Yanpo, the fleet on the water, and the relief armies. He also didn't really have a way to communicate with the main army. While the Ming were busy preparing for their final assault, the Japanese were also preparing. Mori Hitamoto sent two messengers to sneak into Tosan Fortress to let Kato Kiyomasa know that help would soon arrive. So just keep holding out. While these messages were being traded back and forth, Shimizu Toyohisa, as night fell, moved his men from Ionyang and we're now marching his men to Ulsan as well. I now want to take a minute to explain the condition of the Japanese defenders inside Tosan. From the beginning, Kato Kiyomasa had determined that the matchlock men were the most important in terms of the defense of Tosan. And because of this, while most of the men sat starving and in a daze from dehydration, the gunners at the wall weren't. You see, Kiyomasa had made sure that the gunners got priority as far as supplies were concerned, which meant that there was still some fight left in them, as you'll see. Day 12. It's just past midnight and the Ming were readying their final assault. Yang Hao gave the order to attack, and all the Ming's artillery was fired at Tusan, setting anything that could be on fire ablaze. The Ming soldiers then rushed forward to scale the walls with their ladders. There was a problem though. The Japanese had just heard that they would soon be reinforced and were able to fight back with all of their strength. Salvation was on the way and morale was with them. The same could not be said for the Ming. The conditions had already taken their toll on the men. And on top of that, while the first day had been extremely successful, every day since then had been disappointing. If morale was with the Japanese, it wasn't with the Ming. Yang Hao would have to have several men executed for desertion, and even had a cavalry commander tied up in front of the men because he was starting to give up himself. Another thing worth mentioning was that the bravery of the Ming captains was also starting to work against them. Because of their bravery, they typically led their men from the front, and because of this, they typically died in front of their men too. While this was happening, a letter was intercepted by the Ming. This letter was then immediately brought before Yang Hao and Ma Guoi. This letter was quite alarming for the Ming commanders. In it, it said that numerous commanders and around 60,000 men had come to save the defenders. Yang Hao was also receiving reports at the same time that 90 Japanese ships were sailing up the Tewa River. 
and they would soon be at risk of being surrounded. Yang Hao would have a short meeting with Ma Guoi before giving the command at 7 a.m. that they now needed to retreat. There's actually some discrepancy between Chinese and Korean sources about what happened next. Now, Chinese sources insinuate that they told the Joseon that they would soon be retreating, while Korean sources such as the Sanjo Silic say that they were not told about the retreat and only caught on when they saw the Ming burning supplies and taking down their shelters. Either way, the Joseon commanders and even some officials beseeched the Ming to stay and fight. They felt that victory could still be obtained. The Ming felt differently and thought that all the plans that the Joseon were suggesting was not only pointless but foolish. Now, given the circumstances, the Ming's mindset was, well, understandable. Yu Song Yang also wrote about this. Later, the Japanese sent their relief force by land, and as they approached, Yang Hao became scared, and then all of a sudden withdrew his army. I think it's obvious that there was now tensions with the Allies. Either way, by 9 a.m., the Ming were in full retreat. The infantry and wounded were to be the first to leave. The order was to make their way across the Dongchun River and then continue onwards to Kyongju. While any of the troops currently surrounding Dosan would retreat towards the mountains, the cavalry commanders and their men at Jotun, as well as Li Rumei and Zhi Sheng on the west riverbank, were to guard the Ming army as they retreated. By 3 p.m., other than the forces ordered to guard the rear and Yang Hao, the Ming army had successfully retreated in orderly fashion. With that out of the way, Yang Hao at Hak Song San then ordered his troops to take their own camps down and prepare to leave. This included the burning of supplies and the destruction of weapons, armor, and really anything that would have to be left behind. While this was happening, a Korean shipment of supplies also showed up. This too was burned. Yang Hao and his men then started to leave. Inside Dasan, the Ming retreat hadn't gone unnoticed without delay. Kato Kiyomasa sent a messenger out to the relief army across the Tewa River. There were still some concerns on the Japanese side, so they opted to keep scouting the area and wait for a better opening. When smoke from the burning of supplies could be seen, well, then they decided to act. However, there was still a problem. Both Kuroda Nagamasa and Hachisuka Iyamasa were hesitating still, which delayed the joint army from moving and possibly from taking a big opportunity. This act would later be reported to Toyotomi Hideyoshi himself, who would punish both of them. While this hesitation of the first army was going on, the second and third armies came under attack from Wu Wei Zong's elite troops and Zhu Cheng Zun's. Mori Hidemoto's troops and these elite Ming troops were actually pretty evenly matched, though, so there really wasn't any progress made for either side. Although, you could say that the fact that the second and third armies were currently engaged was technically a victory for the Ming. Kikawa Hiroi, who was behind both Hachisuka Iyamasa and Kuroda Nagamasa, had lost his patience with the both of them at this time, and commanded his men to make their way across the river. Anakokuchi Iiki would confront him, calling him impatient and disobedient. Hiroi would then snap back that monks should not interfere with the business of samurai. He then crossed the river. Now, unfortunately, his brave actions would purposely not be reported to Hideyoshi by his superiors. The first army was now crossing the river so that they could attack the Ming's rear. While this happened, the Japanese fleet on the Dungchang River was starting to land troops, and the Japanese inside Dosan were also running out of their gates to fire upon the Ming as they retreated. The Ming realized that if they didn't act fast enough that they would soon be surrounded, and in these circumstances, doomed. So they went on the attack and launched themselves at the Japanese force crossing the river, who were also now rushing forward to attack themselves. 
The attack was very brief with few casualties. The mounted Ming soldiers were now in retreat. The Japanese army then took control of the Tewa River's north bank. Hikawa Hiroi, however, wasn't pleased with this progress though, as he felt that they were still being too slow. So he raced forward and recaptured Byongyongsong, which in turn cut Yang Hao off from being able to retreat to Kyongju. Yang Hao was now forced west towards Yongyang. Seeing this, 300 troops disembarking from the Japanese ships raced forward to recklessly attack the Ming rearguard, who was able to chase them away through a charge. Funny enough though, Shimizu Toyohisa had just arrived to Ulsan from Yongyang. He then joined forces with the men getting off the ships and blocked the roads to cut off Yang Hao's retreat once again. This forced Yang Hao to take a mountain route to Kyongju. Toyohisa responded by urging his horse forward but did so alone as his men were on foot. Still, he did manage to cut down two Ming soldiers before turning his horse back around. Now if we go south to the battle happening between Wu Weizong, Zhu Changzun, and the Japanese second and third armies, well, the Japanese were now gaining ground. Wu Weizong's men called a retreat and forced their way north across the river, but came under fire from the Japanese ships and suffered greatly for it. Zhu Changzun went a different route. As they still had horses, they would actually force their way out from the Japanese encirclement south. Now, according to Chinese sources, he was still upset at the situation. So he had some troops sneak into Sosengpo Fortress that at this point was mostly empty to steal a signboard and left for alloyed territory. Tosan Fortress was now completely secured, and supplies were being given to the defenders. This would later cause problems as many of the men overate and overdrank, which caused many of them to become sick, and some even died from this. Kroto Nagamasa was now feeling confident enough to start killing off any Ming stragglers and pursued any Ming forces left in the area. To his credit, his men did kill a good number of these stragglers and did catch up to the retreating Ming army behind the hill of Baigamsa Temple. The Ming rearguard was ordered once again to cover the retreat. Now, according to Ming sources, Li Rumei and Xi Sheng would then lead a cavalry charge against the Japanese, leading to several casualties. The Japanese then backed off as the Ming cavalry rejoined the main force. They didn't give up, however. Instead, they continued their pursuit from a safer distance. These sources go on to say that the two sides stood their ground and stared off against each other, and it was then broken when two mounted samurai rode forward to test the Ming, who in turn cut their heads off. The Japanese then gave up and returned to Ulsan. This is actually a stark contrast when using Japanese and Korean sources. Sources such as the Sanjo Silik say that the Japanese charged the retreating Allied troops and killed large amounts of stragglers. Far away from this battle, Lu Zhizong would also escape. Korean sources typically say that he and his men were all wiped out due to the fact that he lost contact with the main forces. But he wasn't. He did lose 700 of his original 2100 man force, though according to Ming sources. As for Yang Hao, he went to Kyongju briefly and then went to Andong. And the Japanese relief force would then settle down at the walled city at Ulsan. The commanders would then write their accounts of what had happened and then send it back to Hideyoshi in Japan.